Hi, I'm Nate, and you're watching Photo Learningism. So if you're interested in digital tablets like I am, but you're concerned about getting it to work on Linux, why don't we take a look together at the H610 Pro V2 and see how that works on Linux, and let's do that right now. Okay, so the short answer about this this tablet, this this Huion 610 Pro V2, does it work on Linux? Yes, with some caveats. Um, <laughs> let's just start digging into some of the things. First of all, the surface of this device is much larger. I've covered uh, a previous device in the Huion line. Uh, which was quite a bit smaller, but still worked very, very well on Linux. And I was very pleased with that other device. In fact, I have that here on the side. I can show you kind of the size difference here. This is that model here. <laughs> and the drawing surface is pretty small for that predecessor model. Um, and again, it worked well. It had a different approach, which I appreciated. It had a battery in the pen and that allowed the pen to function more of like an independent mouse. The Surface did have a connection over USB 2.0 um, and that worked well. I didn't have any issues. There weren't any translation or really scaling issues. It was a small surface, but it scaled fine into the drawing surface uh, for working with things like Krita and GIMP. And I did make a video previously on that so you can see how to do that. This new one, what's very interesting about the 610 here is that the pen does not have independent power. All of the power actually runs through the device itself, which is a very interesting idea. That saves some of the headache of someday the battery is going to die and you'll just wonder for a bit why is it working. <laughs> so that's a big benefit. The second one is just the overall scale and size of the drawing surface. It's a lot easier to adapt things when you're trying to work in finer detail on a larger project. Now, I did some quick testing. I, I did say that it works in Linux. This really comes out of the box designed for Windows and for Mac, all right? Now, having said that, there is a way to get it working for the most part on Linux. The pressure sensitivity does work very well, and it seems to do that right out of the box. I did try some things up front. However, as soon as I plugged it in, I will say that it was detected it did just start working to its own with limitations. The buttons on it do not work, just to say that. Um, there are some write-ups and things about how to get that going. You can add a configuration. There's some projects out there, which I'll put some links to, um, which you can check into further if you like to. I have not gone so far into that. I did a little playing, but the buttons honestly are not so important to me. I'm relying more on my keyboard for some of that functionality. Um, the buttons on the pen, actually, I'll say that those do work, just kind of coming with how it detects it. So in Krita, just to mention this, the buttons do work where one of them works as the move and grab and the other one is the right click. So you can get to the color palette menu and do those kinds of things uh, right from the pen. The buttons that I'm referring to are actually on the pad itself. And I'm not quite sure what they're intended to do from the pictures on them. Um, I believe they're customizable, so you can set those up and actually configure that with a little bit of hands-on configuration if you ever wanted to. In my position, again, that wasn't so important because I rely on the keyboard shortcuts for a much of that. All right, so as I mentioned, it comes with the pressure sensitivity and that works really well with Krita coming into, I'm on Ubuntu 20.04 LTS if you're curious, um, and that seems to have worked well with that. There actually is a Linux package that Huion does provide, and I brought it down, and it's supposed to help you with challenges like screen mapping. This is another area that's a little tricky on Linux, uh, where you supposedly can have the option to say, okay, well, I want this, this drawing device to translate over to a secondary screen. If you're using multiple monitors like I am, it's supposed to give you that capability where I want the grid that I'm drawing with to transfer over to my primary second screen. Now, it doesn't work though. <laughs> it does work in Windows and Mac OS. However, the options just don't seem to be recognized in Linux yet. So as a workaround, what I found you could do is while you're gonna be drawing with it, 
put your monitor arrangement in single screen mode. Um, and I understand that's not like a perfect world scenario, but what you would do is disable kind of the smaller secondary if you're working on that arrangement and work on one primary and then your pad actually will automatically in Linux translate to that one screen and you'll be able to work on your preferred screen that way. And it's, it's not a hard thing to do to set that up and then flip back when you want to go back to your two screens. Yes, it doesn't give you the capability to spread out that far over two screens if you're used to that. So that's that may not be so good. My scenario is that I have one really big screen and then a kind of a smaller screen on the side. So I use the bigger screen, obviously, when I'm doing this. So the workaround may not necessarily be a perfect fit in your case, but it is a way to get it going in Linux. Um, there are some other write-ups which I've looked at, which talk about how to map to a screen, because it seems that Huion does respond against the Wacom driver, although I could not make it work in my flavor of Linux. Um, it's possible that it may be a little more favorable in something like Kubuntu or Linux Mint. Um, I did not try those specifically because I don't have those at my fingertips and ready. But it might be worth a try if you're feeling adventurous. I'm just showing you what I've discovered and how I made it work for me in Linux and Ubuntu. So that's really kind of the spin. I did not test this in GIMP because I'm more of a Krita uh, enthusiast. Um, and that's just what resonated with me. Um, I may try that in the future just to kind of expand out to see how far this tablet can go. But I can confirm that it does work quite well with Krita. I was on version 5.02, if I remember correctly, which I know is not the super current version, but I don't see any reason why it shouldn't be adaptable because Linux itself recognizes the device and then Linux, sorry, and then Krita picks it up from that configuration that's imported. So I don't think there should be any challenges there. I'll put a link to this product in the description below if you're curious to look at it further and consider purchasing it for yourself. Um, now that you can see that it works on multiple OSs and devices and has good response um, and has good uh, opportunities to really no matter which operating system you're running there. Uh, so you can check that out if you like. Um, if you do purchase it, uh, it does help out the channel because there's a commission associated with it. So no pressure, but if you happen to do it, I'd appreciate it if you use the link. Also, give me a thumbs up if this was useful to you. Consider subscribing if you haven't done that already. And come back and join me in the next video. I'll see you at that time. Take care.